Um, so I'm here today, you might have heard me talk about school registration in Boston. I'm here to talk about a, another registration process that really needs uh, attention, and that's business registration. So small businesses are the engines of economic development. They create jobs, they create tax revenues back, <laughs> and, um, and they create vibrant and, and engaged communities. Um, you know, many cities know this. Many of you in the audience are probably, you know, ha have initiatives to, to encourage small business. Uh, Las Vegas is a perfect example of that. Uh, but even with innovative policies in place, there's one part of the process that's still really challenging, and that's business permitting. Um, business permitting often starts with a trip to City Hall, uh, which can be a daunting experience for first-time business owners. Uh, when they get there, it's made even worse by kind of the lingering effects of the economic recession. Uh, think about what it means to someone with a full-time job uh, that the planning department is only open four days a week until 2.30. Um, then there's the paperwork. Uh, forms that look different depending on the department that they come from. Forms that ask you for the same information over and over again. Forms whose relevance to your plan usage is not always clear. Um, it's important to note that Big development projects like the Warrior Stadium in, in San Francisco have teams of attorneys and site selection experts to help them through this process. Really big businesses are often courted by mayors, governors, senators to bring that business to the jurisdiction. These are really important forms of economic development. Uh, this is Lamar Alexander who's famous for bringing automobile manufacturing to Tennessee. Um, these are important forms of economic, uh, economic development, but if the sole focus on these big projects, the headline winning, you know, thousands of new jobs, there's a group of people that get left behind. Uh, and that's people like Kendra and Zach. They founded a company called Penny Ice Creamery in 2010 in Santa Cruz. They now employ 65 people across four locations. So they're a model of the kind of small business that every city wants. It took them 21 permits to get started. So this is a, this is just, it's too difficult. This is just a too challenging of a process. So Open Counter helps people like Kendra and Zach to navigate the complexity, complexities of business permitting so they can get their companies up and running quickly and easily. So how do we do that? We put permit discovery and application functions online, essentially opening the economic development department 24 seven. Much like the Las Vegas application, the first two questions we ask are use and location. What do you want to do? Normalize that to the municipal code. And then where do you want to do that? And ask your city's GIS system, what's the information about this parcel? What can happen there? Using that data, we can do a zoning inquiry lookup in less than two seconds, a process that in some cities will take hours, if not weeks. Then we start collecting information. And the thing that Joel and I have really hit on is that you, in one city we looked at that we brought on board, they had 63 pages of applications and they asked for the applicant's name 33 times. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we get your business details up front. We figure out who you're going to employ, when you're going to operate. And using that information that the applicant provides, we discover processes that the applicant probably has never heard of, like that fire inspection in Las Vegas or development impact fees, which is a big deal here in California, or if you're in a parking district and you're going to have to pay annual fees to the city. We can also you know, help optional permits, like, yeah, you probably need a sign, and the city's going to want to get, get a permit for that. Once you know how much it's going to cost and how long it's going to take, you can submit this information to the city, and that information is going to be consistent in all of these processes. Your name's going to be spelled the same way. Nobody's going to have to figure out your handwriting. It's like TurboTax. On the other side of the application, we built a lot of tools to make city workers' jobs easier. You can look at an application on a single page. You can extract information into an individual process. Um, you can also you know, pull data out via the API and jump it into another system. And all the content that's in OpenCounter is uh, configurable by a couple of clicks in our content management system. If you need to change language or if the city council changed some rules, just go in, make a couple of clicks, it's done. We also provide a dashboard. And what's interesting about OpenCounter is like since May 15th, OpenCounter has helped 500 entrepreneurs scope out a project in Santa Cruz, California. 55 of them have actually started businesses. That's more volume than the physical counter did last year. And it's way more information than, than I used to have in my job in economic development. Like I can tell with this dashboard which businesses are starting, in which locations, who they're going to employ. And like looking down the road, I can see where the hot neighborhoods are on the map. 
So uh, Open Counter started with Code for America last year with the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, we were happy to be selected as a winner of the Night News Challenge uh, in June of this year. And that's allowed us to scale beyond our starting point in Surf City uh, to now eight cities ac across the country in three months. Um, cities like Gonzales, California, an agricultural community of 8,000, uh, to Los Gatos, California, home of Netflix, population 30,000, to Houston, Texas, uh, where fourth largest city in the country, uh, where thanks to Bruce Haupt, we're working with the city's permitting center and Open Houston to bring Open Counter to that community. Uh, these are very different cities, but they all have one thing in common, which is a commitment to fostering small business development. Um, and and, and just, just to, to kind of put this in perspective, I mean, you may have a Steve and a Waz in a garage somewhere, uh, and if you start that relationship right in the seed stage, you know, you can grow with them uh, to be the next, you know, a next apple. So thank you very much.